2017 Jaguar XE20D odd diesel. Competitive but short of outstanding. Highs and lows. Highs. Torquey diesel that delivers 40 plus miles per gallon, taut dynamics. Lows. Slow and heavy for the class, tight interior dimensions, doesn't flow down winding roads. Ever since BMW lost its laser focus on driving dynamics superiority when it launched its 2012 F30 3 Series redesign, we've been searching for a suitably satisfying replacement as our favorite all-around, everyday car that best combines practicality with driving sophistication. Among newcomers, the Cadillac ATS impressed dynamically but was missing pretty much everything else, and the Lexus is as compelling only in specific trim levels. With aluminum intensive construction and an attractive price, could Jaguar's new XE become the one? Ripping around our favorite winding, two lane roads, the XE certainly feels less isolated than the 3 Series a great start. Even though this particular car wore 18 inch all season tires our Sport V6 models are available with 20 inch performance rubber lateral grip was a still impressive 0.88 grams, which is more stick than the XE's minimally bolstered seats can handle. However, despite more than ample grip, taut wheel and body control, and quick steering, linking corners in the XE doesn't come as naturally as in our transcendent favorites. Frankly, and somewhat surprisingly, its bigger and heavier brother, the XF, possesses more of this corner carving effortlessness. We also don't like that the XE's brake pedal has a bit of softness early in its stroke before the system starts to respond more linearly with additional pedal pressure. We've noticed this undesirable quality on a number of recent Jaguars, making us wonder if it's a, misguided, part of Jaguar's tuning philosophy. Initially, we found the XE's ride to be slightly too abrupt over expansion joints and other sharp impacts. When we hopped into the driver's seat the next day, the recommended tire pressures the value we set when testing cars practically leaped off of the door jam placard, 43 Psi front and 47 rear. Why so high? When we inquired, Jaguar officials claimed it was to be robust when the car is loaded to the XE's maximum cargo and passenger capabilities. But we're skeptical, since many competitors manage similar loads without such astronomical pressures, and we suspect that fuel economy ratings were actually the driving factor here. The owner's manual also lists a comfort setting of 34 Psi front and rear, which is for up to three occupants and one luggage item using that preferable lower setting, we found the XE has much more satisfying responses the tires seem to bite the pavement better in response to steering wheel inputs and the lower inflation pressure also took the sharp edge off the ride. The steering effort is lighter than our ideal, though, even in the sportiest dynamic mode, which has only a slight effect on weight. On the positive side, this setup does make the XE feel lighter on its tires than it is. And the XE can use the help, as its mass was one of the biggest surprises, despite aluminum intensive construction, a curb weight of nearly 2 tons makes it the heaviest in its class. The diesel delivers on fuel economy, less so on performance. The XE20D is one of the few remaining diesel offerings in its class, Starting at $37,395, a $1,500 premium over the gasoline-fueled 2.0-liter turbo. Our test car scaled the options ladder nearly to the top at a breathtaking $56,345. That climb started with the addition of all-wheel drive, $2,500, and skipped past the premium and prestige trims to the top, our sport model a $10,100 addition that adds a host of comfort, convenience, and driver assistance items along with a more aggressive look from a modified front bumper and the addition of side sills and a trunklet spoiler. On top of that, our car had the $2,100 comfort and convenience package, heated and ventilated front seats and heated rears, a power trunklet, and rear window shade, the $2,700 technology package, including Jaguar's latest in-control touch pro infotainment and navigation system running on a 10.2-inch touchscreen, a 17-speaker Meridian sound system, 
and Wi-Fi connectivity, the $1,000 adaptive shocks, and $550 glacier white metallic paint. The 2.0 liter Ingenium Diesel's headline number is its 318 lbft of torque, with 180 peak horsepower, that's identical horsepower but 38 additional lbft versus its primary competitor, the BMW 328D. It fires quickly, even on a chilly morning, at idle it sends a slight vibratory tickle through the seat and steering wheel. Stop-start functionality is pretty slick, especially for a diesel. There's just a slight shudder as the engine speed falls to zero and a quick and clean restart. Some compared it with stop-start systems on gas engine competitors, which is high praise. However, if it restarts on its own before the driver's foot comes off of the brake pedal, it's far more jarring. It's a workhorse engine, with an even, steady pull through the rev range making a mostly agreeable grumble. The four-cylinder never raises its voice our interior sound level measurement with the throttle pegged was 73 decibels, three higher than when cruising at a steady 70 miles per hour, compare that with a 7 decibel difference on a V6-powered XE, but it's not invigorating, either, never goading the driver to spontaneously dance with it using the shift paddles. That's just as well, as the paddles are rendered in cheap-feeling plastic, during maximum acceleration, it shifts roughly 300 rpm short of the 4800 rpm redline, and the results were less than impressive, 0 to 60 miles per hour in 8.4 seconds and 16.4 seconds at 85 miles per hour through the quarter mile. That's more than a second slower to 60 miles per hour than the last all-wheel drive 328D sedan we tested, 7.2 seconds. In the daily grind, the XE's power feels adequate particularly the swell of mid-range torque and the 20D feels responsive enough off the line when driving gently. But hammer it from rest, as in our rolling start test, and you can count 1-1000 before the Ingenium awakes. Indeed, the XE's 5-60 to 60 mph time is 1.1 seconds slower than its 0-60 to 60 time and 1.5 seconds behind the BMW in this measure. But a diesel's primary mission is fuel economy, and there the XE delivers. Once up to highway cruising speed the engine chugs along, turning fewer than 2,000 rpm at 80 miles per hour. We found the trip computer's fuel economy claims to be optimistic by nearly 10%, but the XE did achieve an actual 42 mpg on our 75 mph highway test loop, 2 mpg better than its highway label. That was with the high tire pressure settings, we reran the test at the comfort pressures and got 41 mpg, a recent gas-powered, Rear-drive BMW 330i also achieved 41 mpg on our highway test, but a rear-drive XE diesel should do better still. Overall, including much hard charging, we averaged 33 mpg. Given the 40-plus mpg fuel economy, quiet highway cruising, and 600-plus mile range, the XE20D makes for a great long-haul companion. Just make sure to switch off the lane keeping assist system, whose steering interventions are abrupt to the point that they led to repeated passenger inquiry about the source of the undesired swerving. Quite compact on the inside. Although it looks compact, the XE actually has more length, width, and wheelbase than the 3 Series. Surprisingly, however, the XE's interior volume is closer to that of BMW's 2 Series Coupe than the 3 Series sedan with which it's intended to compete. And whether you call the XE's exterior tastefully restrained or just plain it's also derivative to the point of confusion with its big brother XF it's never a good sign when not a single bystander notices a vehicle that's about as new as they come. At best, it's a missed opportunity. And, on an execution level, we were dismayed at the large gap between the rear fascia and the twin exhaust tips. Although significantly larger than the Cadillac Atsa's minuscule back seat, the XE's feels notably smaller than those in the 3 Series and the Audi A4. The large plastic pieces on the lower rear corners of the front seat backs don't help, as they prevent shoes from sliding neatly under the front seat cushions. Front headroom, which already is on the snug side, 
is diminished 1.2 inches by the optional sunroof, making it the lowest amongst its peers. Our tall drivers found their heads brushing up against the headliner. The front armrest built into the door is a double-decker design, but the upper rest is too high and the lower too stubby to be useful. Furthermore, it doesn't make sense to us that the window switches, which tend to get used more often, are located on the harder-to-reach upper shelf, while the lower shelf houses the memory seat controls. The armrests are thinly padded, too. Given the lack of space inside, we're especially bothered by signs of squandering, such as the large rectangular block of glossy black plastic surrounding the circular shift knob that serves precisely no function. In a similar area, the Audi A4 packages its large MMI knob, all of the ancillary shortcut buttons and switches, and eight preset buttons. Infotainment and Electrical Annoyances Electrical trouble with British cars is one of the most tired automotive tropes, and yet the first day we drove this XE its voice recognition was unresponsive no matter what we said, the system's response was no speech detected, making us suspect that the built-in microphone had somehow come unplugged. But, go figure, the voice rec then came back the next day and continued to work fine thereafter. Once it returned, we were dumbfounded that the navigation function on Jaguar's brand new in-control touch pro cannot be controlled using voice commands, which is simply unheard of. It's also annoying that there is no way to lock the map's orientation with north up. There were other gripes, the four-way switches on the left steering wheel spoke sometimes control the radio and sometimes the screen embedded in the gauge cluster. When navigating the ladder screen, hit the left, back, button one too many times and oops, the radio station changes. Here's another, the volume adjustment doesn't speed up when holding down the buttons on the steering wheel, we measured an agonizing 16 seconds to slow the volume from level 30 down to 10 or vice versa. We of course wholeheartedly agree with the idea of a more dynamic entry luxury sedan, and we could even forgive the tight interior space if the XE were lighter and more involving. So. It's a competitive new entry, and the diesel delivers where it matters fuel economy but we'd stop short of proclaiming Jag's new XE as the one.